Hello and welcome back to another video. In this problem, we're told that the city of New Orleans is located at latitude 30 degrees north. We're asked to use figure 9, which we have right here, to find a function that models the number of hours of daylight at New Orleans as a function of the time of the year. And to check the accuracy of the model, use the fact that March 31st, the sun rises at 5.51 a.m. and sets at 6.18 p.m. So before we do anything, let's just look at the number of hours that we're actually going to be looking for on March 31st. So 5.51 a.m. to 5.51 p.m. is 12 hours. Then it's another 9 minutes to 6 p.m. to 6 o'clock. And then another 18 minutes on top of that. So that's 12 hours and 18 plus 9, 27 minutes, which we know is 20 is 12, sorry, 0.45 hours. Just because our final answer is going to be an hour, so we're going to need to know that we're looking for 12.45. Okay, so we're looking to model the 30 degrees north, which is this pink line right here. And we can see that all of these graphs have the general trigonometric feel to them. So we're going to use y is equal to sine of x. So what is y here and what is x here? We're going to say let y equal the number of hours of daylight. Easy enough. And x is going to be the time of year in months since January 1st. So for, let's say, June 1st, right? That means five whole months have passed, so X would be five, right? March 31st, three months have passed, X is gonna be three. So for this 12.45 hours, this is gonna to have to work for X is equal to three. Right, since January, February, and March have passed, we're three months since January 1st. Okay, so now what are the transformations that we're gonna to have to do to this original sine function? Because that isn't this. So first, let's worry about the horizontal um, shift. That's the first thing you do. We're gonna start inwards and work our way outwards. So we have the sine of horizontal shift the start of the sine function, which I can actually just draw down here briefly. So it goes pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. Looks something like this. So this zero value, this starting value happens at zero. And we are moving it to this point, which is sort of looks like three quarters of the way through March. So that means that 2.75 months have passed, which means we're actually starting at 2.75. So we've shifted 2.75 units to the right. Therefore, this is x minus 2.75. Next, we have to worry about horizontal shift. How much, or sorry, horizontal stretch. How much is that taking place? Well, the difference between the highest and lowest points on the traditional sine function from 1 to negative 1 is 2 units. Here, we're going from 14 down to 10. So that's 4 units, so it's twice as much. So it's been stretched by a... Actually, sorry, that's the vertical shift. It's been stretched vertically by a factor of 2. It's also been stretched horizontally. By what degree? Well, if we see the distance between the quote unquote zero point, right, which is the starting point of 12 hours, we see that it reaches the same point six months later. So instead of going pi, it's now going six before it reaches that same point. So therefore, we are stretching it by a factor of six divided by pi. This is going to be reversed because we're doing a horizontal. So the multiplication that we're doing here is going to be the inverse of this, multiplying it by pi over 6 to get the same effect. Right, the vertical shift, sorry, the vertical stretch by a factor of 2 just results in a 2 out front. The horizontal stretch results in the opposite of this fraction. And then the final step is the vertical shift up, 
the typical starting point for a sine function is zero, we're starting at 12, so we add 12. So our final function is y is equal to two sine of pi over six times x minus 2.75 plus 12. This is our model. And again, we're looking to test it on March 31st, x is equal to three, and we want to see an output of 12.45. So y is equal to two times sine of pi over six, x is equal to three minus 2.75 plus 12. Two times sine of pi over six times 3.2, three minus 2.75 is um, a quarter, one over four, plus 12. So this is y is equal to two sine of pi over 24 plus 12. This is two times 0 0.129 plus 12. Two times 0 0.129 is roughly 0 0.26 plus 12. So our answer is 12.26. This is our expected amount. And we can see that this is very close to our actual amount. And the variability is due to the only number in this stretch, which is not perfectly accurate. Right, we don't actually see exactly when this date is in terms of March. And if we had gotten it exactly right, then it would actually be very, very close to 12.45. But just close enough, just estimating, yeah, that looks like it's three quarters of the way through the month, we get 12.26.